Started with this expression. And then 
the, correspond the two corresponding uh, coefficients are related by this, uh, actually it's a definition, this is how I define my so-called phase shift. <coughs> okay, so if, if there is k, k prime, is that two momenta, or quasi-momenta, uh, uh, quasi that I switch, then, uh, then this ratio, I call it the phase shift. Think, think I call the phase shift. So this, this will be a phase, uh, and uh, this is how I define uh, theta. So these minus signs here, both here and here, these are conventions, if you wish, because this is just a sign of theta, and this is a shift by, high, uh, by pi, right? So again, this, is, this depends on which book you, you're using. Uh, and again, the beta uh, philosophy is that all scattering, pro uh, all scattering processes uh, can be broken down into individual two, two body scatterings. So there are no diffractive terms when when you when you have three or more uh, particles coming in and then they somehow redistribute momenta and they go out. This cannot happen. They can only, uh, I mean, so they can they they can really only reshuffle the momenta uh, among each other. And this is uh, equivalent to saying that you have successive two-body scatterings because in, 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 two, in one day, a two-body scattering because of energy and momentum conservation cannot change the momentum, right? The set of momenta will be the same. Okay, so... So now I have to show that this is a correct answer so these, these, these states are eigenstates. And, uh, Quoting Sutherland, we can say that as a useful byproduct, uh, we will obtain the solution at the same time. So, so let's act on this state uh, with uh, the Hamiltonian. And uh, okay, this I, I write out in some detail, but you should do it yourself probably at some point. Okay, sorry. Uh, so first, uh, I forgot to say. Uh, so first case when uh, so what this means is that there are if you think about these hopping particles, there are no neighbor uh, in this in the state there are no uh, neighboring particles. Okay. So this is the easy case, right? Because they, are, they don't interact and they can freely hop to the left or to the right, both of them, I mean, any of them. So they don't interfere in some sense. Uh, because obviously they cannot hop at the same place because they are hard for both of them. So if you think about the spins, it's clear that uh, it cannot happen. So it's not surprising that this is a good answer in this case because they don't talk to each other, so free waves uh, plane waves should be uh, a good solution, but we do get uh, the dispersion relation. Uh, okay, so we are, I'm talking about this case, so Hamiltonian acting on psi in, with this constraint is this. I think here the notation will be quite uh, obvious. So this is what there was a constant term, and uh, this is where a particle hop one to the right and one to the left. Okay, so the minus one. Uh, the minus one is not. Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah. I just don't think that. Sorry. Okay. Uh, so now, if you let me. Okay, let me continue here. So this, I want you to write. <laughs> So now if you if you plug this in, it's quite clear that what you get is oh, 
okay, and then if there's a magnetic field involved, so let's, uh, okay. Okay, let's talk about the zero magnetic field for a moment. So, there's a sum over J here. Okay. So we see that, sorry, this is a tambos. Formally, 
when we learn our neighbors, we, we create these, uh, these terms, right? Formally, at least. And then also, we have to take into account the inter so called interaction term in the Hamiltonian. But if these cancel each other, or this, if the our function is such that these cancel each other, then we don't have to worry about this, and this will be the final result. Okay, so that's the logic sum. So now we have to solve, we have to find conditions uh, for this. And, and here comes a. A step that uh, instead of working with n particles, you can really focus on just two particles. This is again very similar to what Jay has, uh, uh, was talking about. That basically here everything depends on the two, two body physics, the two particle scatterings. And but the reason uh, why this is so is that if you remember there was this uh, the beta results wave function, we have a big permutation, but now we can pair these antifactorial terms, we can pair them uh, such that if we are such that uh, it describes uh, let's see what I want to say um, so what I want to say is that for each two particles I can group these, the two terms in these antifactorial terms together, which, which correspond to just swapping those two parts of okay? So let me give you an example. For three parts, this is the first non-trivial case, three particles. And uh, let me use this notation, so, so the wave function and the, the state depends on these parameters, so the wave function depends on the coordinates as well. And so this, here we will have six terms, right? Because the th six permutations of these momenta, but we can pair. We can, I can write down three pairs. So these six six terms I write as three pairs, and and in each pair we, we see that what we have is nothing else but the two particle wave function multiplied by something. Uh, which in the general case will be the n minus two particle, some, 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 something. It will be a sum over n minus two permutations of the n minus two particles. In this case, it will be a minus one particle, so there's no sum left. But okay, and so this is when k one and k three. I collected k one and k three. Really, this is how I convinced myself that this actually works. But I wrote down, wrote down the terms here. So again, this has six terms and factor, three factorial six, but I collect, uh, group these six terms into three pairs. So here, this is a two particle beta on such wave function, so it has two terms, right? So we have all the, all the terms, we just rearrange them, and we recognize that in each pair, what we see is just permutation over two momenta, such so a two particle wave function. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and so if, if this con condition is satisfied for a two particle wave function, then we are then we are good. Because then each term separately satisfies this uh, condition. Okay. Again, this is very similar to what uh, to what uh, Jean Sebastian did. You know, yeah, different these guys, but, uh, but basically he also he was looking for in the two particle physics uh, or, or scattering he was looking for a condition uh, so that his ansatz were this is very similar and now this is really homework uh, let's specify these two two particles. So as we as we saw, split under wave functions soon get very complicated that they have n factorial terms. But for two particles, 
you can we can sit down and uh, write it down and still consign a, a, a short expression so we can write it, write it down okay so this is what you, you have to do to write in, in each term write down the wave function okay so this is a sum of two terms right two, sum of two plane waves similar here similar here and what you will find is uh, uh, I, I think now you can imagine what, how it goes. So I let me really skip this. this. This is just really simple algebra, okay? But you understand what you what I'm talking about. I hope. So just plug in plug in here the, the two part two part obey transats basically with the. Uh, I'm thinking of, let me give you one example. So psi x x will be what? Will be right? So if it was an x one x two. Then this is the beta transverse wave function. Okay, so I chose the coefficients of this term to be one, but it's just normalized. I'm not talking about normalization now. Okay, it's not important for us. <laughs> the linear equation. So, but because of x, because x one and x two are equal, and with x here and x here also, and x here and x here, you will have to do this also for this term and for this term. For that, the terms, everything, and you will find this. Periodic in K. 
with the with the figure two pi. It's just a usual thing. Okay, so another homework is uh, to write down the phase shift. Of course, it's the law of this, but uh, uh, using some identities, you can write this as, let's see. The fact that the solution you find is factorized is a choice or if, uh, is a force? Uh, you solve so the this, condition. So this is just a re reshuffling of the oh. solution of that equation. Yes. You find by reducing to a two particle problem. Yes. yes. This is a choice or a, a, no, a general I mean, once, once you accept the big, that you, you work with this beta and the function, it's not a choice because. Uh, it's an identity. Uh, yeah. So if you have this three particle wave function, as I said, it has six terms, you just reach out to pair terms. So you have three pairs. In each pair, you realize that's what you get in this case. <coughs> uh, yeah, some, some over these two, per, I mean, two terms, and exactly the, the two particle wave function. So you can always do this even for 100 particles, mm -hmm. but then here you will you you will not only have one particle but uh, 98, so there will be a huge sum over permutation of the rest. But this is just a reshuffling of the series, so you can you can say that it's a necessary but not sufficient condition, right? Because now we we said that or now we have this term by term, and that's for the whole. Maybe that was your your question. Okay, so really now I'm just this I don't know actually. So but I can imagine that somehow it's very hard to to satisfy those constraints. Otherwise, if not, then okay. Yes, this is what I would say. But mm -hmm. I, I really, I can, I don't know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. So obviously, this is a, this is a sufficient but not necessary, not necessary condition, or at least it's not trivial <laughs> from what I just explained. Uh, Okay, and, and finally, again, I uh, forgive me for uh, referring to Jean Sebastian Coe's uh, lecture so many times, but this is uh, really uh, what happens is uh, <coughs> what I want to say is that uh, the logic is, is exactly the same, and that he, he really explains uh, very well that if we put periodic boundary conditions, which we like because it's translational, uh, it's translationally uh, invariant, then if you remember, the logic was that whenever you, you swap two particles and you pick up this phase, this phase factor, right? So let's imagine that you start swapping them one by one, always the, the nearest neighbors in some sense, and then the, after the last scattering, you bring this guy back to the beginning. So in the end, you, you see that you didn't do anything because of the period boundary conditions. So there are some, again, some consi uh, consistency equations. And let me write them down quickly. So this means that we have n k's, okay? So we will have n equations. Maybe I have to. And this is a product over the rest, n minus 1 uh, uh, momenta, quasi-momenta, quasi and let's see. So I think this is correct if you have a plus here, because that's the scattering phase. So this time the scattering phase is equal to 1, this is another way to write it. Okay, 
uh, and then let uh, I won't copy this over line. If you want, you can copy the inverse of this here. So this is, these are m equations for the m and spin flips. So these are called beta. I don't know, maybe you can refer to it as a beta and such equations. This means that there is no particle, right? Uh, 
Uh, um, with hindsight, now maybe I should, I would, I would pick the other state as a, as a ground state. It's equivalent, and we have particle wall symmetry. But I think in the literature, especially in the algebra of the literature, uh, it's more common to use this state as a, as a reference state. So uh, this is just a, a challenge for you <laughs> to, uh, to follow the, uh, uh, with this uh, convention. So, add, okay, maybe I should add that it shouldn't give too much uh, different, difference, too, or too many deviations. But for example, one uh, thing that you must be careful is the definition of momenta. If you go from the particle picture to the whole picture, momenta can shift by pi. So this is something which is a, you have to be careful when you compare formulas. Okay, so m0 is this, and as, as you remember, there was a shift in my Hamiltonian constant shift, uh, and so that this is zero. So what, what do we have when we have one spin flip? Spin up flip from particle. Well, that's easy because there is no no interaction, right? The guy is, is alone, and this we saw. This is what I meant that we will obtain the solution right away while proving that it's a good answer. We we, we obtain the, the spectrum. Uh, okay. Uh, you remember when, when I acted with the Hamiltonian on the beta on the wave function, we got the sum of these terms. And uh, I remember that I, did, I said that let's focus on H0 at, at, the moment, at, the, at that time. But this is nothing else that my Hamiltonian had a, an extra 2m H term, if you remember. I mean, it's, it's, it's only natural, right? Because if you spin, uh, if you spin then if there's an external magnetic field in the z direction, then you get some. So let me put it now. Ah, oh, sorry, this is not correct. Uh, okay. So let's uh, let's draw this. And then 
again, it will be gapped. So I, 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 get, I get out of this excitation. And uh, so what is the minimum of, the, uh, of this? Of course, it's when cosine is 1. So j times delta minus 1, when it is equal to 2h, and then this is the point when I give um, mass or gap to these excitations. And this is exactly, this coincides with this critical magnetic curve, if you remember, this j half uh, uh, 1 minus delta. Probably there is a, a minus Einstein change in my convention. So if you read my, oh, actually, okay, so this, is, this corresponds to this, uh, this curve, right? And then, of course, if we change the sign of the magnetic field and the SDM thing, then all of you are this curve. Okay. So this is exactly that. Now we see where it comes from uh, in a much, I think, a much easier way. So we just read off the minimum of this function. Okay, so again, if H is bigger, then we have all spins up and, uh, and uh, total magnetization. And we have a gap. Okay, Everything will be the same. 
but it's a different state. So what this is, is the uh, degeneracy of states, the spin degeneracy, uh, because the solutions we, that we get from the beta Ansatz equations with finite... Uh, uh, okay. Uh, if we don't have these, <laughs> these, uh, these special uh, uh, momenta, then these are highest weight states. Okay. And each, uh, each uh, total SZ state has, uh, has two, two SZ plus one degeneracy, right? Because uh, this is a symmetric. Okay. And the way it appears in beta ansatz is that uh, you have uh, some nice normal solution. This is the highest weight state, so it's max with maximum SZ. And the way you generate the, the other states in this uh, multiplet is by adding these strange particles, which really don't do anything uh, in, in, in the sense that they don't change the energy and, uh, and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, so I have uh, two minutes. Or uh, when, when should I start? Or it's not a problem. It is a good point to stop. Okay. Yeah, this is what I'm thinking of. Uh, because, uh... I'll be back. Yeah, probably, probably it's a good idea because. Uh... Yeah, it will be too much. Uh... But let me. Nobody gave homework, so now I'm giving homework. Uh, as a preparation for the next, uh, next uh, occasion. Uh, um, okay, of course, I think it's, if you're interested in this, you should, you should do it once, at least once on your own. Uh, let me make the following substitution. And this is, this is where we, we want to start next time. Okay, this is a, this is a definition of lambda, where delta is equal to minus cosh uh, eta. Okay, so in one of the regimes, so we, I, I think now it's clear to you that, that we have two, three regimes. That is smaller than minus one, between minus minus one, and they have greater than plus one. So now let's focus on the first regime, and, and let's say you, you, you have this idea to substitute this guy with this expression. So this will be your new variable. Uh, instead of k, and uh, what you have to show, let's see, what you have to show is that e to minus theta, k k prime, is uh, it's a very simil uh, similar expression actually. So now you see what, what the point is in this crazy substitution that the phase shift will depend only on the rapidity difference. We will call these lambdas rap uh, rapidities and it depends only on the difference. So this is a, a very good... Uh, this is the, these are the variables we will we, we, be going to use. So we will forget about the case soon and we will switch to the rapidity with lambda. And this is only in this regime. There will be two more I mean, in the two other regimes, we have different uh, uh, something, what is this, uh, changes of, uh, of variable. And so I will start from here and you will see what this implies for the, for the, for the equations now. We, we, are trying to, we will try to solve the, uh, the equations uh, and, uh, and 
and see what, what the consequences are. So, are there questions? So I hope that means that I was clear enough. Uh, but anyway, you can find me, and, or you can, uh, you can ask me uh, questions any, any time, but of course next lecture is uh, Thursday. Okay, thank you very much.